Laurie, good morning. Over to you. Good morning. Treasurer, welcome to the traditional pre-budget interview. Great to be here with you, Laurie. Look, there's a lot riding on this budget. I mean, people say, in fact, the election result could ride on it. Are you nervous? What is riding on it is the successful transition of our economy from the mining investment boom through a more bro broadened, diversified, stronger new economy. I mean, that's what the budget needs to address. It needs to have an economic plan to manage that transition successfully. And we are managing it successfully. I mean, we've got 3% growth from last year, more than 300, around 300,000 jobs. So the budget's actually about the economy. It's about jobs and it's about growth. I mean, there'll be plenty of talk about politics and all that sort of thing. But for me, it's about us ensuring that we can manage that transition transition and continue to do it well. But within a week of this budget speech, Malcolm Turnbull will go to the Governor-General and uh, have both houses dissolved so they mm. can have a July 2 election. So mm. isn't this effectively the Coalition's election manifesto? What it is is the government's national economic plan for jobs and growth and, and a strong new economy. That's what it is. And, and that, is the, that is what we'll be saying to the Australian people is needed to ensure that we can continue to do well. I mean, there, there is a lot riding on ensuring that we get this plan right and that this plan, uh, that we stick to it as we will and, uh, and, and we get an endorsement for this plan because that is what is going to be there to support the jobs and the growth in the future and we we're going to do that by you know not spending more than we save we're going to do it by ensuring that we don't increase the tax burden on the Australian economy at this very critical time over and above what the current projections are uh, these are things that, that you have to get right and, and that's the plan we're putting to the Australian people okay but it's still the start of an election campaign mm. will you have money for election sweetness, election goodies? Well, this is not a, a budget and not a time uh, for, for governments to be throwing money around or for others to be throwing money around. What you have to do is you have to spend wisely, uh, you have to spend carefully, and you have to spend in a very targeted way. And you, and you don't spend more than you save and you don't increase, increase your spending based on higher and higher tax burden on the Australian economy. And our economic plan is all about ensuring that we live within our means. I mean, Australians are living within their means. They're living within their means in their business. They're ensuring that their spending goes further with what they're doing. And, and the government has to do the same, and that's what this budget will do. So are you saying this will be the first budget in living memory that won't have election sweeteners in it, the first pre-election budget? We're, we're focused. This budget is about an economic plan. It's not a typical budget, Laurie. I, I'm, I'm really upfront about that. It's not a typical budget. It's a budget that has to be responsible and focused on the economic plan that the country needs. What about you yesterday's leak about uh, tax cuts for people earning $80,000 and above starting the day after the election. That, that will certainly be seen as an attempt to win votes, won't it? Well, I, I'm not going to comment on the speculation in the papers. The, the denouncements will be made on, on Tuesday night. Well, Christopher what, Pine virtually confirmed it Well, well I, I'm not yeah. going to comment on, on that speculation other than to say this is we have to clear the way for people in this economy. The people are actually making this economy work at the, at the moment, Laurie. The ones that are successively making this transition work are small and medium-sized businesses. They're people out there earning average wages. And we need to ensure that we are clearing the way for them to continue to do that because they are the hope of the side. They are the ones that actually will see all of us, the whole economy, go through this transition. So in, 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 in focusing on those who we think you need to absolutely back in to make the economy work, well, that's a good plan. Okay, now you're, you're playing down the suggestion of election sweeteners. What about nasties? Will there be much in this budget that will alienate voters? Well, we'll continue to ensure that government expenditure as a share of the economy reduces. It must. I mean, the way that you fix your budget, the way that you fix the problems in the budget and return the budget to balance is by getting your expenditure under control and by growing the economy so revenues can lift uh, with that growing economy. Now, that's how you get back to a sustainable budget balance. You don't get there by whacking up a massive tax burden on the Australian economy. Not only is that not a sustainable position to be in for the long term, but it is, it is just hurting the Australian economy at the most sensitive time in this transition. That's why it's not a taxing and just throwing money around to try and um, you know, pay, sp spend all those taxes is not a good plan for jobs and growth. But will, will there be big cuts in this budget? Uh, be, there will be continued discipline. Continued discipline, it Laurie. No, it's, it's continued discipline, which we've been showing. And, you know, there are always difficult decisions in all budgets because, I mean, for example, in health and education, we have got commitments in this budget. And we've already outlined the commitments on, on health of 2.9, and I can confirm also the $1.2 billion additional that will be in the budget and forward estimates, uh, which gives, I think, families assurances about critical things. But we pay for those additional commitments through real... Uh, 
targeting of our expenditure in other areas. And that's how you make these commitments. That's why our commitments in health and education are affordable. We're not spending money we don't have. We're not spending money we haven't saved. We're not increasing the deficit to do it. And we're not increasing taxes to do it. It's affordable. It's, it's real money, unlike what we saw from the Gillard government, throwing money around, making promises on health and education. And the ultimate outcome of that is people are either left disappointed or they pay more tax for it. Well, you mentioned the $1.2 billion that uh, uh, we read this morning yeah. will be in the budget for disadvantaged schools. Uh, more than that, for, for schools, 1.2 for, for, for schools funding, um, and that would mean that over the budget and forward well, estimates... That's schools. right, but I can, I can tell you today is, uh, that in addition to that 1.2 billion, there'll be 118 million over two years uh, to particularly support uh, disabled uh, children in schools, and uh, that's another important program, and that's on top of the 1.2, but it's all paid for, it's all real money, it's all money that Australian families can rely on because we've done the work to be able to pay for it. Now, what, there are tight conditions on this $1.2 billion. What That's are right. they? Well, those conditions, well, Minister Birmingham and the Prime Minister will make further announcements about this. But when you're spending money, you've got to make sure it goes further in this economy. I mean, families understand that, businesses understand that. And so you just don't throw money around. You, you make sure that there are real conditions and outcomes uh, that, that we want from this. And so we do want our, our, our children to be able to be get, doing better on, on, in maths and in, 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 in English and in, in their reading and, and all the basics. We want to make sure they're doing that. And we also want to make sure that it's focused on lifting the performance of our teachers as well. We've got great teachers in this country. I mean, I was taught by public school teachers mm. all the way through my life, as was my wife. Um, and so I'm, I'm a keen believer in the public education system. And we've got to make sure that the teacher quality is there to support our children. But this is basically Gonski chopped back, isn't it? What this is is an affordable plan for growth in education expenditure. Our education expenditure will increase by more than 25% over the budget and forward estimates and will come to close to $20 billion at the end of that period. Now, that is a significant increase in investment in education. It's, all, it's also a lot less than Gonski wanted well, it, and it, a lot less than Labor is promising. Well, Labor is promising higher taxes. That's what they're promising. And what they're promising is an unfunded plan over the longer period of time. What I'm saying is we will spend the money that is affordable, we'll spend it in a way which is disciplined, and we'll spend it in a way which gets outcomes. I mean, we've had a growth in spending in education over the last 10 years by both sides of politics, but we haven't been getting the outcomes in education at the same time. So throwing money around isn't the answer. Spending money wisely and making that dollar go further is what you'll see in this budget for our children and education. With a lot of help, though, from Tony Abbott and Joe Hockey, your government now has the reputation of, of being cutters when it comes to health and education. Now, it doesn't sound as though the budget's going to turn that around. The health and education will be big election issues. And we're increasing education spending by over 25% over the next four years. So, I mean, I'm not suggesting um, that that can do everything that everyone would like in education, but it's affordable, Laurie. I mean, you just can't go and spend money you don't have. But That's what the Labor Party will does. Will the states accept that? I mean, the New South Wales Coalition government's been one of the leading critics of the federal government's education cutbacks, and all. Well, look, it's, it's the, the Commonwealth government accounts for more than half of all education spending done by the states, once you take account of all the special purpose payments and other payments and transfers that are made to the states. More than half of all funding of education paid for by states is actually as a result of the funds they get from the Commonwealth government. So we are more than an equal partner in the investment in schools, and particularly public schools, around the country. And we'll continue to invest in that. I mean, the, the funding for public schools alone under this plan increases by a third over the budget and forward estimates. Now, we will, do, we will spend responsibly at our level, and states need to spend responsibly at their level, and there need to be ties. Otherwise, it will be just spent on higher and higher wages and, and blowouts and other expenditures, the which we've seen from the state. Well, the, the states have to manage their budgets well as well, and they're, they're making their own decisions about their own priorities, um, whether it's in the infrastructure they're spending or, in Victoria's case, spending over a billion dollars on actually not building uh, the east-west link. Now, they've got to be accountable for their expenditure. Uh, we will be accountable for ours and what we're doing on education and health, because on health, there's also $2.9 billion extra that we announced at the COAG meeting, which they all agreed to and, and accepted. So we have a clear plan to affordably fund what you need to do in health and education, and that's what the budget will do. Why? Because we've got our expenditure under control, Laurie. That's the key. 
That's how you can make these commitments. Well, you say that, but expenditure has increased since Malcolm Turnbull became Prime Minister. Well, no, that's actually not true, Laurie. Um, expenditure as the share of the economy has not increased. What In the MAIFO statement we released last December, it showed that our policy decisions on spending meant they were more than covered off by our, our, the savings we made. And that will be the same again in this budget. So where there are additional commitments, like for uh, the additional refugees that were being taken in under the plan uh, re-Syria. Um, these were things that we found the savings for to be able to pay for. We don't do it by putting up taxes. But That's you, But, you, but you're, going to, you're going to introduce the, the seniors tax, as Tony Abbott calls it, uh, at the high end of super. Well, we'll deal with integrity in, in the tax system. We'll ensure that um, what are very generous uh, tax concessions for superannuation for those on very, very high incomes. We've made no secret about the fact uh, that we'll be um, looking at those measures and those things will be announced in the budget. We've also made no secret about the fact that we'll be cracking down further on multinationals. Now, we put legislation in the Parliament last year to crack down on multinational tax avoidance and the Labor Party voted against it. They actually voted against making it illegal for multinationals to avoid tax. Uh, a few quick questions. The Reserve Bank Board meets on Tuesday to consider an interest rate cut. Will the Governor Glenn Stevens be briefed on the budget before that meeting so they could take into account what you'll be doing? Well, look, um, the Secretary of the Treasury is uh, a member of the Reserve Bank Board and I I'm not going to go into the sort of discussions that I would have uh, with the Reserve Bank Governor. I don't think that would be very appropriate at all. Uh, but, uh, I mean, he has an important job to do that day, as, as do I. But, and I, but and will I, I have... be able to take the budget into account? Well, that is a matter between the Reserve Bank, Treasury and ourselves. But what I'm saying is I have absolute faith in Glenn Stevens. He has been an extraordinary Governor of our Reserve Bank. the public now? whether you're telling the Reserve Bank what you're up to. These matters are market sensitive, Laurie, and I, I, I'm not but about to... But the fact to... you have discussions. Right? We, we, we talk all the time. I talk to Glenn regularly, and you can be quite assured that Glenn Stevens will be in a very good position to be informed of the decisions he has to make on that day. Well, I can't quite see how it affects the markets if you say, yeah, we, we'll tell Glenn what's in the budget, but... Well, <laughs> we'll have to have a different view on that. I, I suppose that's right. Yeah. Um, will the budget make any meaningful uh, inroads into debt? Uh, debt, as long as we've got a deficit, debt will obviously continue to increase and that's why we have to reduce the deficit and the de deficit will fall over the budget and Ford estimates in the in the statement I released will it fall in the on budget? Tuesday night. Well the deficit there's still a deficit so debt will increase so long as you've got well, a deficit what about the by deficit definition. Itself? Will that improve? The deficit will decrease over the budget and Ford estimates and uh, and we will see both gross and net debt peak um, over about the next five or six years and uh, and then it will start to fall and that is consistent with the projections we've put forward in earlier statements but to start reducing the debt You've got to get the deficit down. To get the deficit down, you've got to keep your spending down. And you don't do that. Uh, you don't get a, a sustainable path back to budget balance by increasing the tax burden on the Australian economy. That just retards growth over the longer term and it punishes the economy at a time when we needed to perform at its best. Now, you were saying a few months ago that there are excesses in the way negative gearing works. Have those excesses suddenly disappeared? If not, why aren't you acting? The on first thing you've got to do when you're looking at tax changes is you've got to do no harm. You've got, to, you've got to make changes that do no harm to the Australian economy. And our systems are never perfect, uh, but when you look across the, the negative gearing in particular, who are, which is predominantly used by mum and dad investors, it's police officers, it's teachers, it's nurses, it's train drivers, they're the people who actually do negative gearing. Now, at the upper end, uh, there are people who use it as well. But if you're to make changes there, you've got to think about, well, what will that be the impact on the housing market itself? And what will it do to, to the confidence of people in the value of their own home? Now, one of the reasons why our economy has done so well has been the confidence of householders to be out there and participating in this economy. Now, if you want to crack the confidence and crush the confidence of Australians, then start playing around with the value of their family home, which is what Labor is proposing to doing with their quite reckless proposal. We won't be doing that for those reasons. Now, you, you keep saying that Australia, the government, has to live within its means. Mm. So how do you reconcile that with the submarine decision the other day where the government has agreed to pay $35 billion in today's dollars for 12 French submarines and they could have got 12 German submarines for 20, maximum of $20 billion. Well, I'm, I, you're not a National Security Committee, Laurie, I am, and I'm aware of what, of what, of what the numbers... And, and, I am on and, that committee, and, you, and you can I tell you what this defence decision is, is of, of course it provides for our long-term uh, defence needs and interests. 
but, more, but in economically as the Treasurer, what it means is by building these submarines in Australia, we are enabling a transformation of our it's defence a, 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 industries. The, the German submarines would have been built here as well. In fact, yeah. the Germans the, want to build all 12 here. The French want to build two in Paris, in, the, in well, France. And that's not what will happen. That's not no, what will happen. No, but but why, why pick the vastly more expensive one if we're living within our That means? was the unequivocal recommendation of those who ran a meticulous process which was overseen not just by those peer-reviewed here in Australia but some of the defence minds in the world. So there will be so, lots of commentators... No, shock horror. Bureaucrats want to spend a lot of money. No, no, You're Laurie. saying that we should live with our no, means. Right? What, I'm, what I'm saying is, is we're going to invest in Australian jobs. We're going to invest in Australian industry. Australian industry. jobs either way? No, no, no not necessarily. Not necessarily. Well, under the German bid that we've well, all been done here. Laurie, not necessarily. This, this bid that we have entered into a negotiation on. So it's a negotiation now. Designs have, have not even been drawn up yet in terms of what the submarine might be. But the point about the defence decision, it's an investment in the transformative power of our manufacturing industries. That's what we want to see happen. High-tech jobs in Australia will come from this decision. Wouldn't the Germans not have provided high-tech jobs? Well, if, if it was the best bid, Laurie, you know, uh, then the defence chiefs... And you're paying nearly twice as much? No, that's not Where true, Where are we Laurie. living within our means? Laurie, you, you've got to build the thing that the country needs, step Number one, well, you've the, got country, to do, you've the, got the country needs, you say, mm. conventional diesel electric submarines. And the French specialise in nuclear submarines, the Germans specialise in conventional. Well, Laurie, Where's that is the logic. Laurie, the decision we've taken is completely in accord with the strong and unambiguous recommendation who know far about more about this than so, frankly so, so you the, and I am put French together don't make multiplied many conventional by 20. Subs made you an offer that, for subs that are twice it, as good, do you think? It meets the requirements more than any other bid. And it's vastly expensive. And it invests in Australian jobs, high-tech jobs, for decades to come. So does the German and that's And that's what we're investing in. Now, if, if, the, if the other bid was a better bid, then that would be the bid they recommended. But it wasn't, Laurie. You're suggesting that we well, should have gone against the advice what I'm saying to you is people, of people, people in the who field have, have, have gone through this from top to bottom over months and months and months, and they've come up with a clear recommendation which is understood and supported by peers both here and overseas, and it's the right decision, but more importantly, it's the right decision for the Australian economy. This decision will produce jobs right across the supply chain in Australia and help us further in this transitioning economy yeah, you see, to so support would, high so tech would jobs. The German the... bid. So yeah, that, but that Laurie, argument isn't you're making that assertion on the Same. basis of information that frankly is questionable. Well it, it's the bid that the Germans provided you. And, Which was not it, assessed as it, the best it, bid by people, people who know I've what they're doing. To since you made the decision are uh, quite frankly bamboozled. Some of them say it's going to be another fiasco. And there is a suspicion now that, it, that people in defence ultimately want to transfer to nuclear subs, which is why they've gone with the French model. Well, which that is not the decision of the government. The, the bid that the government has, has agreed to now negotiate it on was the unequivocal recommendation, daylight second, when it came to the needs and what we needed for so our defence industries. So it's worth paying twice as much for the French it, sub? It, the, the bid that was put to us was the bid that was universally recommended by those who were, were tasked to do the technical work on working out what the best submarine was for Australia. Now, as Treasurer, the best decision was to have those built here in Australia. So that decision is about high-tech jobs, not just in South Australia, but right across, the, right across the supply chain. And you add that to what we've done on the frigates, you add that to what we've done on the Pacific patrol boats. What this means is it's not just about the shipyards in Perth and in Adelaide, it's about jobs right across the country. Now, I think Australians understand that. This is, this is a, a wise investment, it's a calibrated investment, and it's a decision based on the best possible advice the government could get on this issue. Okay, well let's hope it's not a fiasco. We thank you. Thanks a lot, Laurie. Good to be with you. Back to you.